Rico was able to get some key double plays to get out of some trouble. See how he fares against the Blue Devils today. First pitch right in there for strike one to Zach Morris. Morris, the transfer from VMI, grad student. He was second team all SoCon a year ago. And Hudson pours in the first two pitches. Here's a look at that Duke lineup. This team 20 and eight. They have power, they have average. It's a dangerous offensive group. And they also have some youth as they throw some freshmen out there. That one pretty well struck to left after starting back. Horton will come in a couple of steps. And Todd Hudson retires his first hitter. And one of the great things we're seeing too is, you know, the first pitch strikes and, you know, as a Liberty uh, or defensively, just attacking the strike zone. And we've seen that be fruitful over the last couple of games. Great job by Todd Hudson getting ahead in the count right there and producing a fly ball. We also think about for a guy like Hudson, he hasn't gotten real deep into ball games, right? They're just hoping to get a hey, get two innings. Anything past that is a bonus. You have a chance now with that one hopper to short to have a pretty efficient first frame that could allow you to stick around a ball game a little bit longer. Yeah, absolutely. And you see here the Blue Devils, they are aggressive. Like these guys can hit. And so as if Hudson just continues to pound the zone there, continues to not get outside of himself, you see there are two quick outs. And uh, that's a really good start uh, for Hudson here on the mound. That was Ben Miller who was just retired. Now brings up talented freshman A.J. Gracia. Flames shift him. Gracia trying to drop a bunt down on that third baseline, just get himself on, unable to do so. We saw this actually in Liberty Series this past weekend against Sam Houston. Same kind of situation. Exactly the same. And it's just statistically, you play the analytic numbers and you'd say, hey, I would rather give up my single one base instead of having a double, you know, right off yeah. the bat. So it's all analytical and they're playing the numbers. But you got to respect Grassi as a team guy trying to, in the three hole, trying to lay it down there. Says, you know what, I'll just swing away and drop one into center field. So he's on with two outs. What a freshman campaign he's having, hitting over 340 now on the season. So the Blue Devils with their first base runner. We'll bring up Logan Bravo. A transfer from Harvard. Duke making the most of the transfer portal. Have added some talented pieces. Bravo being one of them. Hitting 324 on the year. Hudson just misses with that fastball. Hudson will be 88 to 91 with the fastball. Also throws kind of a cutter and a changeup. Is that one missing? Duke won the previous matchup between these two, four to two. The final back in February. Flames, though, they lead the all-time series between these two programs. There have been some classic games between the two. Liberty leading the series 16 to 14 over the years. That one smashed down the line, but it is hooking foul. Long strike, evens the count of two and two. And Bravo just missed that one. That's a great swing. As I watch these uh, Blue Devils in the box, uh, you just see their maturity, right? They're, they're taking their time. They're calm. They're looking for their pitch. He took you know, the first two balls there and uh, just missed that one. Hudson is lucky there. And veteran hitters, too. And a guy like Bravo has been around. Two-time captain at Harvard. Hit over 300 there last season in 44 games. Pops that one up. We'll see if it's playable. Simmons playing first base today over to have a look and runs out of room as that one lands in the Blue Devil dugout. All right, Barrick, you've been in those situations on the other side. What's it like trying to manage? Right, where's the railing? Where are the where's the steps? Where harder than it looks? Yes, way harder. You know the wind swirls here um, at Liberty Stadium, and I'll never forget having to learn, almost relearn how to catch a pop up again, where you have to run. I thought I'd have to run to the rail. Yeah. But it always usually comes back, and so it is hard. You have to calm yourself. You have to take your time so your eyes aren't bouncing, and uh, just really key in on on the ball there. But it is definitely tougher than it looks. 2-2 pitch misses. Count goes full. As we mentioned, Simmons getting the start at first base, a spot that has typically been held by Brian McClellan. 3-2 pitch on the way. Runner goes on the pitch. It's fouled away. 
So after two quick outs to begin this inning, Todd Hudson having to work a little bit now. Gracia will once again get a head start at first base. And that one misses upstairs. So two quick outs, now two base runners for the Blue Devils. And got an opportunity here with two away. Yeah, and Josh mentioned it great, too. You're going to face, you know, one through nine for the Blue Devils, and they're going to be very methodical, right? And they're going to be watching pitches, and there's not going to be a get-me-over out or an easy out by any means on any of these uh, these hitters for the Blue Devils. Brings up Alex Stone, a senior out of New Jersey. Brings in a five-game hitting streak, and he's got some power as well. 33 career home runs, tied for fifth on Duke's all-time home run list. It's a home runs. That's a thing. Duke, they're leaving the yard a lot this year. Fourth nationally with 58 home runs on the season. So keeping them in the yard, job number one. As Hudson struggling to find the strike zone now, he'll get a chat with his catcher, McCadden Dye. Yeah, and good thing for Liberty today is the park is big. That's right. You hit one out of here. You got to earn You're crushing it. it. Yeah, you got to yep. earn it. Not much wind today either. We at times in the spring, especially, you'll see that wind push stuff out towards right field. No wind to speak of at the moment. But a good hitters count for Alex Stone. And that misses upstairs. So Todd Hudson build up the strike zone to those first two hitters, fighting the control a little bit now. Yep, and that's going to be the most important part is to, hey, you know, get the first out, get the second out, but not to get complacent on that last out. Notoriously, it's it's going to be a hard out to get. 3-0 pitch right in there. Talk about walks. It's been a little bit of a struggle for Hudson. Hasn't had many strikeouts this season, just five on the year. It's a big bouncer to Foster. That is a foul ball as he was setting his feet ready to fire. So that'll push the count full. A big moment early in this ball game as Todd Hudson tries to get himself out of a jam. 3-2 pitch on the way. Got in on his hands. Popped up back a third. Foster going back. Gives way to Marsh. And he'll corral it. Had to wait a while. Allowed. The lefty's first offering misses as Kane Kepley digs in. Take a look at that Liberty lineup. Again, one difference you'll see there. John Simmons starting and playing first base. As Kepley turns on that one and puts it on the Liberty football practice field. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this kid, uh, Kane Kepley. You know, he had a solid year last year, just coming out freshman year, and then to be able to reproduce it and to put up the numbers that he's doing. If he goes, the Flames go. And so they're going to need a, a big, big at-bats from him today. Yeah, hitting 320, that leads the team. He also has a team high 24 walks, team high 10 stolen bases. It's kind of that you draw up what a leadoff hitter is supposed to look like. It looks like that as he lines one to right field, and he's aboard to begin things here in the bottom of the first. I love it. What a great at-bat for Kane just to come out, and uh, he's so hitterish, right? You see that? He crushes one onto the football practice field, and then is just locked back in. Unbelievable line drive, just squares it up. Uh, he's definitely a tough out, and uh, this is a good start for the Flames. He's your tempo guy, right? He's the guy that kind of sets the tone for you and gets on base. And, and even if he doesn't get on base, he's going to see a bunch of pitches. He's going to see four or five pitches kind of get deeper into the count and give a report back to the hitters. Tanner Marsh skies that one middle of the infield. And it'll be the third baseman, Miller, taking charge, locking it up. So Marsh retired on the first pitch he saw. One away. Bring up Aiden Sweat as you take a look at this Duke defense. Cruson, Obi, Gracia around the outfield. You just saw Miller at third. Clark and Morris up the middle. Bravo at first, and it'll be making Winslow behind the plate. Sweat standing in for Liberty. Transfer from North Florida. As they check on Kepley over there first. Sweat, 4 for 12 in the same Houston series. 
Drove in four. Scored five runs as well. Said Kepley was hitterish. Duke thinks he might be a little runnerish right now as well. They're keeping a close, close eye on him over there. Yeah, he definitely has the there ability he goes. to run. Breaking ball, picked a good one to go on. Winslow had a hard time getting that one out of the glove. And Gang Kepley has his 11th stolen base in 12 attempts. Yeah, and like we've been saying, just your you know, typical leadoff guy, this is what you want from a guy when he gets on first. He's making that catcher and pitcher think that he can take second at any time. Breaking ball, Sweat swings over the top of it. Johnson fastball change up slider. That's what he'll throw. Now the pick off to second. Kepley gets back in safely. Good crowd here today. To see this one. Flames, and you guys know it from your time in this program, but. Liberty also always faces a number of ACC opponents. You get some great matchups in here for these midweek ball games. Wake Forest a week ago, Duke tonight. Yeah, it was my favorite games um, because these are the teams that you grew up watching, and uh, these are the teams, the ACC, you know, it's always good baseball. Yeah. So for us at Liberty to be able to come here and to be able to play some of these teams, um, it gets everybody excited. 2-2 count now to Aiden Sweat, Liberty's second baseman. They stuck with that breaking ball and got the swing and a miss. And that has not been easy to do. Sweat, just his 15th strikeout on the season. And to, to piggyback what Josh said, too, it, it gives the coaches and kind of everybody on the team, you know, a kind of a gauge of where you're at in the season. You, know, you get to yeah. play some of these ACC teams, you know, really good record, maybe even nationally ranked, and it's say, hey, you know, where do we match up or where do we fit in against these guys? And sometimes you're going to see them again in a regional. That's happened between these two programs, in fact. A few years ago, it was Liberty bringing an end to Duke season in a regional. And I believe that's why Liberty's program, um, you know, and just shout out to Scott Jackson to play these teams, gives them the experience of where they want to be later in the year, which is why you see the program continuing to get better every year. Freshman McCadden die up there right now looking for a two out knock down to the count 0 and 2. So you saw the breaking ball heavily featured against Aiden Sweat. You've seen the elevated fastball so far in this at bat with McCadden die. Stays with it, 94 on the gun. That one missed up and out. Die has been better than advertised as a true freshman. 296, 21 RBIs. Uh, swings through that high fastball and down he goes. So Flames. And who they're playing is going to be critical for their success this season. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Yeah, I thought that was interesting is that fun attempt unsuccessful for Chase Cruson. How Coach Pollard said, we don't even say, like, hey, we're going to play Liberty. We say, we're going to play those guys. In fact, someone was even telling me the players didn't even know who they were playing until they got to the ball. They put the, the bag over their head like a hostage situation. They have no idea until they walk out on the field even where they are. They took totally faceless name. That part isn't true. But, but it <laughs> I is, was going to say, 2024, I don't think you can do that. <laughs> yeah, right. It is interesting that they do not want to build up the other programs whatsoever as that one drops in in front of Braden Norton in left field and Chase Cruston's on. Well, to that point, I love it because if you just stay true to who you are and you focus on what you guys need to do and the program that Coach Pollard has built here with his guys, he knows what he has. So he knows that these guys don't get outside of themselves and just play uh, blue, blue Devil baseball, that they will end up winning more games than losing, and that's what they've done. Yeah. Now you can't argue with the success that they've had. We asked him about you know, his success, too, in terms of his personal success moving up you know, the all-time wins list and all that. And he's like, I don't, I, he, he didn't want to hear it. No, we're not, we're not talking about that stuff. Just glad we won the game. I don't, I'm, not, I'm, not in the, I'm not about that. Which so, speaks to his leadership. Absolutely. All about the guys, all about their success. Yeah. He wants to keep deflecting and, and putting the, the credit towards his players. Yeah, that will be up there right now. That's why I was just going to say I have so much respect for Coach Pollard. He's actually one of, you know, in my opinion, one of the best coaches in the country because he just keeps doing it. He's such a good guy, believes in his players, and you've only heard good things about him. And uh, 
the results reflect on the field of yeah. how he loves his guys. They look there, all-time wins. This Pollard second now in Duke history. in front of McCadden died. Did a good job keeping that one in front of him as the count goes full to Devin Obi. Obi Duke center fielder had a breakout offensive campaign. He's known about his defensive abilities the last couple of years, but hitting 353. Runner goes that misses inside, and Todd Hudson has himself in another jam here in the second inning. And I think we're going to see a very aggressive Blue Devil team here. The, the moment we get even in counts, the 3-2 or even ahead in a hitter's count, I think the Blue Devils are going to be really aggressive today and kind of capitalize off of that. Yeah, Hudson's got to come back into how he started the first two batters, just keep pounding the zone. He can't get behind um, against these Blue Devil hitters. And uh, right now, he needs to not do too much and just get back to his groove of how he started this game. Facing Wallace Clark now, the transfer from Oklahoma. Swings through that change up. Yeah, and you think back to the last start for Todd Hudson. He got himself in some jams, but what got him out of it? The double play ball. There were four double plays turned by the Flames infield in that ball game. He could use one at an infielder right now. That one missing away. You know, we're seeing a lot of aggressive, aggressive pitches too out of Todd. The the OO changeup getting ahead really quick, but it's building off of that first pitch and, and still going after the hitter and not trying to be too precise. So in bunt, taking a strike was Clark. He pulled the bat back. That one was in the zone, so now a one-two count. And he's gonna get a quick conversation with his head coach, Chris Pollard. Uh, or a conversation between Pollard and the home plate umpire, Travis Godek. It's funny how the game irons itself out like that. <laughs> so one and two now the count. Hudson comes home. That one well struck towards left center field. Long way to go for it. Kepley tracks it down. Spins and fires a strike to third base on a hop. Josh Barrick, how hard is that to make a play in left field and, and get that in and hold the runner to second base? Yeah, literally an unbelievable play by Kepley. You know, great bail right here. Kepley's running it down. You see that, and to have the awareness of knowing catching is just the first part, spinning on a dime and throwing it right to third base to keep the runner at second, that's, a, that's an unbelievable play, a phenomenal play that he makes routine all the time. So now you're Todd Hudson, you're telling yourself, okay, I'm one pitch away from getting out of this thing. Making Winslow digs in. Couple runners on, one out, pick off the second. And Aiden Sweat has to leap up into the air to snag that one. Winslow getting the start of catcher today. The freshman hitting just over 300. Swings through that breaking ball. Winslow, the number six rated catcher in the country coming out of high school. A North Carolina native. Skies this one towards right center field. It'll be right field now, and Troyer handles it. Strong throw. Runners stay put. Now there's two away. So Hudson's been able to induce a couple of flyouts, and I just one out of way of getting out of this thing. A big outs there by Hudson. It just shows the competitor that he is, being a two-way guy. Um, he's a competitor. And uh, just being able to come back in an inning that, you know, I know it's early, but it could dictate the game. And uh, putting two outs right there away, that is, that's huge for him. Lineup turns over. Zach Morris stands in, takes a strike. Morris flew out to left field to begin this ball game. He had a couple of hits and an RBI against Liberty back on February 21st. I'll tell you, Todd Hudson's had no problem attacking Zach Morris in the strike zone. He has come right after him in both of his at-bats and been able to get ahead. Yeah, I've been talking about faceless opponents. That's almost how you have to treat the lineup one through nine is, is not a leadoff or a fourth guy or a cleanup hitter. It's, it's no one has a name, no one has a face, and we're just having a job of just attacking the hitters and attacking the strike zone. Yeah, and especially with these first two guys, Morris and Miller being really as Kepley on the other side is when he goes, they go with Morris and Miller. That is where Hudson just has to attack them. 
like he continues to do. Oh, and Hudson just put it right in the middle of his back, trying to get in with that fastball and put it right between the two and the two. And really, you just you got to have a quick memory here and kind of turn that around. At the end of the day, the force is everywhere. We just need one more out and, and two outs if you're a flame. Attack the hitter. Well, you feel like you do that work to get yourself in a good count as a pitcher. You let one get away. Now you've got to deal with guys having one of the best offensive seasons in the country in Ben Miller. Miller, nine-game hitting streak. He's in 451 now after being retired back in the first. In seven of those nine games, they've been multi-hit games. That one nearly ran in and got a piece of them as well. And Todd Hudson playing with fire now with a 2-0 count. And as we say, that action out there in that Liberty bullpen starts to crank up. That one missing up and in. Off-speed pitch. And... Hudson just trying to find anything he can throw for a strike right now. Yeah, I think that changeup maybe got away from them. Maybe try to throw a little harder or locate it too much and just kind of floated on him. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. This Pollard called Ben Miller one of the smartest hitters I've ever been around. It's just enough of that one there to run the count 3-2. And I mean, you touched on the facial hair. Like, if you're going to pull off facial hair like that, you've got to be hitting 450. You know what I mean? You can't wear that if you're a 225 hit. Mandatory. 3-2 pitch, bounced foul. But when you're playing that good, then you add the facial hair. Look right. good, feel good, play good. That's it. That's where this man is on another level confidence. Coach Prime says, play good, they pay good. That's right. Right? <laughs> He said, did they pay good? <laughs> Coach Pride. <laughs> Payoff pitch on the way. Did he just get a piece of that one? Wow. Hudson trying to run that one in on him, and Miller just did get a piece of it. Ooh. Yeah, and to your point of Coach Pollard saying he's one of the smartest hitters up at the plate, that was an unbelievable defensive swing to keep this at bat going. It's going to keep going. Fouls off another one. So, Ben Miller making Todd Hudson really work. And right, Josh, if you have a quality at bat that you see, you know, the fifth, sixth, seventh pitch, you know, that's a win in the dugout that's on right. top of it, the outcome of the in the box. Yeah, pitch on the way again. Sharply hit down the line. Foster knocks it down, gloves it, can't pick it up, and two runs will score. So, initially, it looked like, well, it... At worst, it will at least save multiple runs. Would have been tough to, to get an out from where that, where that ball was. But Cam Foster then just unable to pick the ball up, and a second run comes around to score. Yeah, this is a really tough play over here. You know, Foster, you got to field it, and right away, he's so deep, he's thinking, i got to get rid of this ball. And he just maybe thinks about that a little too much, bobbles it a little bit, and uh, that's a tough break for the Flames letting two come in. So Krusen and Obi both come around, and Duke goes in front 2-0 here in the second. Brings up A.J. Gracia. Hudson trying to limit the damage to this, just those two runs across. Gracia skies that one, shallow right field. Sweat goes out, calls for it, is camped underneath it, and will make the play, but not before the Blue Devils want to run out. And also, hitters are hitting 160 off them. That's the, that's the guy that you want to come in and just say, hey, attack the strike zone. Don't have to be your best and just basically be around the zone. Listen, and a guy, I love personal stories. The fact that he went to a D3 school, balled out, and now is here playing for the Duke Blue Devils in ACC ball. You know, you know what you're going to get from noon is that he's going to give you his best effort because he's worked every step to get here. It's a line out there off the bat of Todd Hudson. Yeah, it, it was interesting. When Chris Pollard saying, even Tim would tell you his stuff is below average for the D1 level. Even he would tell you that, but he's just so competitive. He works quickly. He uses tempo to his advantage. 
He's a veteran, knows all the tricks. There's whatever it takes, and he's just so darn competitive that he finds a way. What do you say, 14-1, to strike out a walk ratio? That's more than just, like, getting by. He's, <laughs> he's succeeding at this level. I certainly say that is, that is exceeding in the D1 level. Yeah, and as a hitter, you know, when you have such strong arms that Duke runs out and then you bring Noonan, I know as a hitter I hated that. Uh, because you come in, you have these guys that are throwing all this stuff. And right, we're seeing 94 in the first That's inning, right. right? And he's just picking picking guys apart. They're taking him for, you know, you know for granted. And um, that ball is smashed down the line off the bat of Cam Foster. And it is foul. Distance wasn't going to be the issue. And we have an awful vantage point. <laughs> we're looking down the line, just being honest. We have no idea. We can't even see the foul pole, but um, we're just kind of looking for that umpire to throw his hands up or and make a decision there. Listen, and we're talking about noon, and Cam Foster's like, hey, I'm in the box. Cam I can like, I've had enough of these great stories. <laughs> Listen, I don't right. care. I got a stick, and I'm, I'm about to put one out of the yard. Jess misses it. It was a great swing. Foster goes down swing in there as noon got him on the elevated fastball, two away. They'll bring up Camden Troyer, so Boone making pretty quick work of the Flames here in the second inning. Troyer, a guy you feel like is starting to show signs of life at the plate. Five-game hitting streak. Drove in four in that series over the weekend against Sam Houston. Blue Devils, by the way, continue to rack up the strikeouts this season. You saw that graphic. They may well end up setting the program record for strikeouts in a year if things continue going this way for them. I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about Tim Noon's tempo here and just, you know, attacking. Even when we saw that long fly ball out for Cam Foster, you know, there was only 0.3 seconds before he's back on the mound saying, hey, I'm going to give you my best and, and just attacking. It's a... It speaks to how they are as a program and really how their bullpen staff enters the game with their mentality. Noon got the start in the first matchup between these two. Went three innings that day. Allowed one run, struck out four. 3-2 pitch. This is down and out. So Troyer able to work the one-out walk. That's a big at bat by Troyer. You know, Noon is going through the lineup, and Troyer, I love how he's, you know, starting to really pick it up and get hot here over the past five games. Kick and hit. He's got, talking about plate awareness, he has great awareness, and he's definitely somebody that the Flames need to continue to stay hot, and this was good right there to get, to see more pitches and to get a runner on base here for the Flames. So one on now for John Simmons. Simmons getting to start at first base today. Just his third start of the year. He's has 17 at bats, five hits in those. The tempo from Tim Noon makes you think of former Liberty great Trevor DeLate. He was a guy that it's like you, you could count on a two-hour, 15-minute ball game, and he, and he probably was going to go eight, eight innings. You know? Yeah. Because he was electric to watch. It was a broadcaster's dream. And a hitter's nightmare. Yeah, yeah. He's one of the finalists for National Pitcher of the Year. Moon ahead in the count here, one and two. Troyer takes his lead at first. Infield shift is on for Simmons. And he swings through the breaking ball. So Tim Noon issued the two-out walk. That's all he gets. Transfer from Queens. We expect to see a number of arms, as is kind of typical in these midweek games. Allman missing with the breaking ball to Logan Bravo. Dahlman, this will be his 11th appearance. Nine innings of work. Ten strikeouts, six walks on the year. And it has been pretty good in, in the short stints in which he's worked this year. Uh, right out of the gate, struggling to find the strike zone. Yeah, but that's just going to be the key for the Flames bullpen. They're going to run a bunch of guys out today, and when your number's called, you got to be ready. Tallman issues the four-pitch walk. So 
Bravo's on to lead things off here in the third. Brings up Alex Stone. Stone popped out to shortstop back in the first inning. Stone's numbers dipping a little bit this year. Last season is ugly swing there for strike one. Last season, he had 315, 17 home runs, and he also had a 30-game hitting streak during the season. Third longest in Duke history. This season, the numbers not quite at that level. Blue Devils hoping he can get hot here in the second half of the year. It's kind of scary. As good as they've been offensively, I think, like, man, this guy, there's still, still a lot more in there. In the case of Alex Stone, they could be that much better. With more, let's check in with Emily. Yeah, and a lot more that this Duke offense can add that Coach Pollard was telling us yesterday. I thought it was really good for our team this past weekend to learn how to win a series without having to be reliant on the home run. Early in the year when we scored, it was because we were hitting home runs. So this team's doing a much better job of this situational hitting. Yeah, this is a team, guys, they hit 11 home runs in a game against George Mason. It's insane. Like that, that'll skew the numbers a little bit, but they, they certainly have some pop. I told you, fourth in the nation in terms of the long ball. Yeah, that's why you call it locked in at the plate. And if they can mix in, you know, not relying on the long ball, but have the ability to do that and continue to play, you know, small ball and different things and singles and doubles, um, you know, they're going to be scary at the end of the year. Allman really holding that baseball. Now comes to the plate. That one's skied down the left field line, foul territory. Foster gives it a look. It will land out of play. Yeah, Duke had homered in six straight games heading into that UVA series. And they went on to just homer once in those three games. That was the final game of the series. Ended up still winning, taking two of three from Virginia. The count remains one and two on Alex Stone. Allman comes to the plate. And it just punched him out. So uh, according to home play umpire Travis Godek, he did not make contact with the baseball. He missed it, and then the ball hit him. Of a four-person crew today, which right. is also different. Maybe big, big game, midweek game. We got the most umpires out there that we can have. Yeah, and for Coach Pollard, it's understandable because usually somebody's not going to swing through and it's going to hit your opposite shoulder. So yeah, for us up here, for there, it's like there's that. no way he didn't tip it. But it looked like on there that it was a good good call by the umpire um, and that it just had hit him. So one away. Brings up Chase Cruston now. Logan Bravo really doing a lot of dancing over there at first base. He is he's jumping around quite a bit here trying to kind of draw the attention of Brandon Dahlman. That one fouled back and out of play. And we're seeing again also Liberty's kind of playing off the shift here. Cam Foster deep in the four hole with Tanner Marsh at, at shortstop and Aiden Sweat at the normal second base. But basically vacating all of the third base side and just saying, hey, we, we'll take that 90 feet, but we do not want to be beat with a, with a double. Yeah, it's become a huge part of the game, right? You know, really diving into the analytics and the numbers and saying we're going to play the odds kind of like the movie Moneyball yeah. um, over the traditional. And, you know, here Liberty is selling out to the, to the shift. checks on the run. Yeah, and, and Shane, to that, though, you as a pitcher have a responsibility in that as well because where you locate could, de you know, you're trying to get them to hit into that shift. You don't want to be pitching to a spot that allows them to beat the shift that you have on. Yep, it's equally as important as where the, as the fielders are at. 
Line drive, and there you go. Chalk that one up to a win for the shift. For all the times that somebody beats the shift and you hear everybody screaming, if they just played it straight up, go ahead and put that one in the win column for the shift there as it was right at Camp Foster. Exactly, and then kudos. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Andrew Koala. That is his job to, to get these Liberty fielders in the right position, and it proves to be fruitful for him. What do you think, Josh? Is that, do you hit into the shift, or do you you hit away from the shift? What's, what is it from a fielder and a hitter standpoint? Well, you saw that. That was a beautiful pitch by Dahlman. Um, you know, just to put that right in there in a sweet spot, uh, you know, where Cruzan could not refuse. I mean, that was inside, right down the middle. And even though he knows the shift is there, it, it messes with you. You can't think about it. He says, see ball, hit ball, and just right, right to where the shift is. So it's just perfectly executed. Brings up Devin Opie. They'll play him. More straight up. Obi walked his first time up, eventually came around to score. The junior out of Nashville, Tennessee, is hitting eight of his last nine ball games. Runners going. The throw from Die down to second on the money and in time. So Logan Bravo, he'd been. Is that you either get a souvenir? where you get a treat, something from the concession stand. That's so, the so ultimate decision. Yeah, if you take the ball back, they give you a, a snack. Yeah, that's, why where would they you, do that to a kid? That's <laughs> terrible. I say, where's the option for yeah. both? <laughs> yeah. You need to get two baseballs. Braden Horton to lead things off with the 9-1-2 hitters due up for the Flames here in the third. Take a look at what Horton's done. His last seven ball games, absolutely on fire. Now remember, Braden Horton, he led this team in hitting last season as a freshman, 341 average. Another team with a 471 on base percentage. Takes that one the other way, and it hangs up. No, the catch is not made. Glances off the glove of Krusen as he went into the dive, and Horton will end up at second base. Great piece of hitting right there by Horton. We love seeing how he's just come on strong here as of late. Beautiful swing, and Krusen. Oh, almost a da -na -na, top 10, but it just missed. Great effort out there. So a double for Horton as he continues to swing it well. A guy that, and we've told this story before, but he broke his hand just a couple of weeks before the season. And really kind of slowed him down at the beginning of the year, but man of late looks like the guy we saw basically from start to finish last season. Yeah, and an injury like that changes everything. Changes your rhythm, changes just how the bat feels in your hand. And baseball is such a feel sport. You know, if you're feeling off in the box, you know, it can be tough. So, again, you love to see a good hitter like Braden be able to really find his groove here. It is exactly what the Flames need. So that brings up Kane Kepley now. Flames leadoff man takes a strike. Kepley. At worst, you just want to pull something on the ground, get that runner over to third. That one missing away. Two and one now to count. Kane, a single and a stolen base back in the first inning. That misses up and out. Three and one now to count to Kepler. And not the count you want to be into that leadoff hot hitter, Kane Kepler. That's right, and even though it's early in the game right now, this is a big at-bat for the Flames. They want to capitalize on that mistake. Kepley hits it hard towards the gap. That gets down and will roll almost all the way to the wall. The run scores easily, and Kepley checks in at second with an RBI double. Trading spots there for Kane Kepley. This is a great piece of hitting. The ball's up, but he keeps his hands on top, stays through. That's exactly what the Flames needed right here. A little life on Flames, baby. Great hit. And you got Kane, Kane Kepley on second base with nobody out with a full artillery of plays and bunts and steals. You got, you got speed on the base pass. They're, they're probably going to take a look at this. So Tanner Marsh, the freshman's shortstop at the plate. Shows bunt. Pulls back, takes one out of the zone. Marsh was first pitch hacking back in the first inning, popped out to the third baseman. Corner infielders, even with the bags, is that fun attempt unsuccessful. Marsh over the weekend against Sam Houston, four for 12, couple doubles, a triple. Trying to 
get a job done here and move that runner. Shows bunt again, gets it down. First baseman took a look at third, but made the wise decision, did Bravo, of uh, taking the shore out. And this is a great job here by the freshman Marsh. He's done well. He stepped in. You love seeing a freshman come in and be an electric, but these are the things that I know Coach Jackson loves is in this moment being selfless, being able to do the fundamentals correctly, and that could be the difference between winning and losing, especially as they go on later in the season. Well, now you've got Kepley 90 feet away for Aiden Sweat. And they have thrown him a steady diet of breaking balls today. Got him to strike out his first time up. Takes a look at a curveball there to begin this at bat. Makes a slash at that one, fouls it away. Now gonna have to battle on two. And, and Aiden may be saying he thinks he caught a piece of Winslow's mitt, I believe. And Coach Jackson made a quick, quick call to uh, get that hopefully looked at. You could see him. <laughs> Him say to Travis Godek, I promise, I promise. And if you promise, I mean, I think they have to take you at your word, don't you? Absolutely. Hey. It's tough there. It kind of looks like, you know, there's some strings hanging off of the glove right there. I don't know. Mm. Well, it's tough to tell, and they are going to give this a look. So we That's couldn't really tell from that, that first look at it. We'll see if they have better luck than we did. And we always talk about it here up in the booth. With the call has to be based on what is what is the call on the field, which was no inhibiting factor right. of the swing. So when you take a look at it, you have to have indefinite evidence to overturn that call. Yeah, and this is going to be a tough one to really overturn. Yeah. However, if Coach Jackson says it hit it, I don't care what those cameras yeah. say. <laughs> that man is a hawk. Yeah. Nothing gets by him. So I'm pretty sure it hit it, no matter what this call is. You can, you can sure persuade it. Maybe get that call. They're trying. Well, they're going to give it a look nonetheless. Take a look at that angle here. And again, it's just so hard to tell. Sweat's reaction, I mean, obviously, just as soon as his swing finished, he was turning around to say something to the home plate umpire. Man, even when we go frame by frame like that, it. The only thing I can see, because his glove didn't move. It what do we have? It's like just a regular yeah. foul ball. So after all that, we're still 0-2, and, and Aiden Sweat can have to battle. He got Sweat, a swing and miss on a breaking ball in his first at bat for to punch him out. See where they go here on an 0-2 count. Yeah, let's see Sweat's, you know, two-strike approach right here. He doesn't need to do much. Infield pulled in for Duke. Sweat checked up, did not go. By the way, Sweat on the year has struck out twice in a single game, just one time. So he has been a hard guy to strike out. But they've done it twice, two at bats, and they've gotten him with the breaking ball both times. So a big, big out in this inning as they're now two away for the Flames. And that's just a great job by Gabriel Nard, not letting that time lapse, you know, get in the rhythm or ruin any rhythm, but just kind of going after and just attacking the hitter, getting that second out for the Blue Devils. Yeah, and to get somebody who's such a tough out, like we just said, a sweat again, just great pitches there. So McCadden Dye going to have to come through with two away. Dye six for 12 in the weekend series. Drove in five. Didn't want to there. Fouled it off of the plate. A big at bat for the freshman here. These are the bats you remember playing against an ACC team. You're up two outs. Your team needs you. And uh, they need a hit right here. Yeah, the strike right in there, 92 miles an hour. And Die now down in the count. Gabriel Nard trying to get out of the jam here, limit the damage.
freshman die. Supposed to be a senior in high school right now. Came to college a year early. It's worked out nicely for him and the Flames. Yeah, that's crazy. Thinking we never did that back in the day, but I love it. And, you know, just to see the type of player he is to hop right in, to be in the four hole here, just speaks to who he is and the confidence Jackson had in him. Pretty well struck to center, but plenty of room out there. OB fading back makes the grab. And the Flames get one. I feel like they left one on the table. Emily out there to chase the flash, but she does have more uh, on Aiden Sweat apparently. Oh, I got flash all day. We yeah? can talk about flash. Okay, okay. All right, well, we need to get you out there on the warning track. Yeah. Right. Don't, don't tempt me. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, Aiden Sweat does have two strikeouts on the day. I noticed something interesting last Tuesday against Wake after he lined out. He was the last one out of the dugout between innings, and I thought, oh, he's just waiting until the last minute because it's pouring down rain. But the inning was about to start. He took a deep breath, and I heard him tell a teammate before he ran out, I just don't want to go out there mad. What a sign of maturity. I asked him about it before today's game, and he said he's always tried to separate the two, not let his offense negatively impact his defense and vice versa. Just need a minute to grab a piece of gum. You know, we all do. Put that at bat behind me so I don't go out there and make a mistake on the field. Guys, for the record, I, I clarified, are you sure it wasn't the rain? And yeah. he laughed and said, yeah, maybe a little bit of that, too. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that does show, though, wisdom, maturity. Then you can say, okay, I know I'm not at my best if I go out there in the field and I'm still caught up in what happened at the plate. I need to kind of take a moment, kind of put it behind me, and then move forward. I'd say a lot of us could never do that. As that one skied out to left field, Wallace Clark retired for the first down. However, that is the difference between good and great players. All these kids out here can play. And we talked about this before the game. It is about confidence and believing in yourself and not allowing those emotions that are real to throw you off of your game. So it shows to the maturity and to the player that Sweat is to take that time to know, hey, it's the pass is the pass, and I'm going to move forward. And baseball is a game of failure. If you can't learn to do that, you will only be good at this game. So one way now for making Winslow that one under his chin. You make a great point, too. As a, as a hitter and a fielder, you do have two jobs, right? You have the offensive part and the defensive part. Unless you're Todd Hudson as a pitcher, your only focus is to throw strikes, and, and you have one job. So that's a great point to just bring up of how, you know, you have a guy that just says, hey, you know, one part of my of my game today, maybe I had a, a hiccup or something, but I'm not going to let that affect the, the defensive side or vice versa. So it's it's really cool to hear from a, a position standpoint. Yeah, it's such a long game. you got to be locked in. Like, are you there for yourself or for your team? And so if you're not doing something up at the plate, yes, you have a responsibility out there. And guess what? You probably have another at bat coming up during the game. And so you got to flush it to be in those big moments and to play like you know how you can ultimately play. That pitch missing downstairs. 3-0 now to count to make it Winslow. I think I broadcast best mad. So that's the difference there. <laughs> I, I think I feel like I need to be like a little angry. You're fired up. Yeah, right. I'll hit you with the left hook in between yeah, that's the break. Good. That's and good. If you could just come keep, back on fire. keep saying like, I like it when, when you keep just like criticizing me and saying things negatively, that just gets me fired up. Matt, I thought you were better. But in <laughs> exactly. person, that's, what that's what I need. That's what I need. I'm caught I'm in caught <laughs> the yeah, middle of this yeah. in the booth. I'm going to have to step away during the break. Yeah. <laughs> UFC announcer style. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. Winslow flew out to right field his first time up. 3-2 count now to the Duke catcher. Obi over there at first base. Always a threat to run. No check on him. Yeah, that's another element to this Duke team is they all can run a little bit. And so when they get on base, that adds to distracting the pitchers to give the hitters better uh, pitches in order to produce runs. Obi's running. Won't matter. That one misses in. So ball four, and Winslow draws the walk, and the lineup will turn over for Duke. You know, if you're Duke here, it says, hey, you know, we're up by one. I don't think one run does is enough for Duke to kind of be complacent. Or I, you would think they need to get as many as they could across. There's not a number in line where it's like, hey, we got to have a three-run lead. I, 
I think with both teams in this midweek, you really have to take what's given. And you know, better than most, obviously, playing the game, when baseball gives you an opportunity, you have to capitalize, because you never know when it's going to come around again. It's such a game of momentum, and so you're 100% right, especially when both of these teams being such good programs, such good teams, you got to capitalize when the opportunity is there. So leadoff man Zach Morris at the plate now. Flames pick to second. Obi back in safely. Morris 0 for 1. He's also hit by a pitch in his second at bat. I able to knock that one down. Morris struggled over the weekend against UVA, just one for 12 in the series. And that one misses again away. There's action in the Liberty bullpen behind Dahlman. That's Ryan Butler, who's pitched well of late. Trying to paint that outside corner doesn't get the benefit of the doubt. And there's that plate awareness yeah. by the Duke hitters. They're saying, nope, you know, I'm only going to swing of something inside the zone. 3 1 pitch, sky to right field. Cam Troyer coming in on it, makes the grab. OB bluffs the move towards third and then shuts it down. So a strong throw from Troyer. Keeps those base runners right where they are, and that'll be the second out of the inning. I'm telling you, we've, that's actually a couple times we've seen it over the course of the weekend in a lot of these midweek games. That trio of Kepley, Troyer, and Horton, very, very threatful in the outfield, yeah. holding these runners really to the base that they're at, and, and always going to be a bang-bang play if they throw it in. I mean, off the bat with Obi's speed and where that ball was, I thought, oh, for sure, he's going to tag and advance. But yeah, they, they respect the arm of Camden Troyer as pitching coach Tyler Robinson emerges from that Liberty dugout. OB at second, Winslow at first. Allman misses with the first offering. This Pollard saying Miller does a great job of getting in the pitcher's head and thinking along with the pitcher. How is this pitcher going to pitch me in an at bat? So far, they're pitching him out of the zone, 2 0 the count. And see, when you, when you go from second to third, you know, you have the guy hitting 455. Next guy in line is 120 points less in the batting average. You, you almost play your matchups in the sense of you don't want this, this hitter to, to put an extra base hit out there and just kind of got to go after him. Breaking ball in there, first strike. Yeah, obviously the one danger of that is that you have two guys in scoring position as opposed to just the one. Dahlman bringing the 2-1 pitch now. Yanked that one, and now you'll have two runs in scoring position anyway, and I think the decision now becomes clear. Put the man on. Yep, I think you're absolutely correct here, especially in an advantage 3-1 count. So that... We'll see what Scott Jackson elects to do here, but you would think that would make the decision for you. Yeah, and tough break right there from Dolman. Uh, you know, obviously just sticking to his hand there. Now we see 3 1. It, uh, it looked like the umpire signaled 2 2. That ball is well struck down the line and foul. So there are certainly two strikes now. Yeah, now the umpire does signal 3-2 full count. So, Flames are taking a bit of a gamble. The other thing, though, Shane, what you're saying is you do not have to give in here and throw a strike. You can make him hit your pitch. And he does, and he laces it through the left side. Both runs will come in to score. So, the Flames elect to pitch to Duke's leading hitter, and he makes him pay. And that's the tough part, too. In, you, in the moment, it's a coin flip play. It's a real, it's a judgment play, right? And so you could always look back and say, oh, maybe we should have put him on or we shouldn't have put him on. The call was made to pitch after him, and, and he just hit a ball that went through the infield. 
And Liberty saying, we're coming after you, Miller. And just to see Miller say, all right, let's go. And what an unbelievable piece of hitting right there. It was down in the zone. He's not trying to do too much. Just put the barrel of the bat on it and square it up. This kid is fun to watch. Now with the shift on, A.J. Gracia shows bunt. We talked about this his last time up. There is almost no one on the left field side of the infield. And he's more than willing to try to take advantage of it if he can get one down, if he sees a strike. Yeah, and I respect it. Like, at least making them think. Like, he might not even do it back there, but he's getting into the head of the pitcher right here. Psychological, you know? Yeah. Gracia, a guy, again, as he squares, he may well set the freshman home run record for Duke this year. And yet, in this situation, he's like, you know what? I'll take I'll take a 90 feet and a, a single, absolutely. Flames don't give him the chance. Four pitch walk. Yeah, and that's the thing with this game. You gotta take the game as it as it comes to you, right? That's what makes you a great player is yes, if it's in the zone, you can hammer it out the park, so be it. But taking the game as it comes and Miller out there at second, Gracia at first for the Blue Devils as that fastball misses inside. Again, trying to tie him up on the inner half. Can't find the zone. Top of that Liberty dugout. That's one thing Liberty is still searching for is, is that guy, you know, when you call your number out of the bullpen, just someone to grab that, hey, I'll, I'll be first out, I'll stop the bleed, and I'll, I'll come and attack him. It's something Liberty's still searching for. You mean like a Shane Quarterly? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I would say that. That's I could, why I could I said get it. it. The cleats are in the truck. I mean, <laughs> maybe I got a glove down there. I, <laughs> Give me seven. I'll be good. Shane seven would come pitches. out. That was what Shane did. And Shane had this thing where he would lean. And the further he leaned back, like the limbo, yeah. he knew he meant business. That, that was it? That was it. That ball well struck to center field. Kepley in his tracks makes the grab. So Bravo hit it squarely. We're right at the flame center fielder. And that'll do it for Duke here in the fourth. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Photo evidence. Todd Hudson to lead things off for the Flames. Skies went out to left field. Brucen back a couple of steps, makes the grab for the first down. Gabriel Nard still in on the mound for Duke. The Nard dog, I have to assume is his nickname, right? <laughs> Has to be. If not, they should change it right now. It's a built-in nickname. I mean, you, you right. have the name. Some, some, some last names just lend itself to nicknames, right? Again, Foster at the plate now. First pitch hack, he fouls it straight back. Cam's been warming up. Nine hits in his last five games. In fact, in his last 10 ball games, he's hit 421. I feel like he is a huge key to Liberty's offensive success. That one out to right center. Obi takes charge and makes the grab. Two quickly retired. Got the start of a quick inning for the Blue Devils here. So Cam Troyer gonna have a little chat with Scott Jackson. This more than anything, just to try to slow things down a little bit. Pump the brakes. Baseball's all about tempo. And this is Scott saying, hey, let's let him hey, think Did out you ever have any through. any instances where you would get called down for a chat like this? And what is actually said? Because everyone in the park kind of knows what it's about. What's the actual conversation? Yeah, it's like, how's your family doing? Are <laughs> you about really? to buy a dog or not? Like, how are classes? He's right. Just anything He's random. 100% correct. Did you watch, are you watching NCAA March Madness? Yeah, okay. <laughs> It's the lightest possible thing you could be asking. Somebody. Very little, like, okay, so here's what you know. Here's this, what his arsenal is. It's not, none of that. 
Yeah, you no, know, it, it's light, but it's also, you know, he's he's trying to get in the pitcher's head, but he's also building confidence into his guys as, hey, we need you right here. Slow it down. You know the tempo. We need a good at bat. And that's one thing coach does very well at just you know, pouring into his guys and just assuring them, hey, you know, you got the tools, man. Or even even if they strike out or anything, they, he's a real assuring coach and makes you want to just produce for them. Yeah, we're biased, but, uh, you know, Coach Jackson, he's the man. Just appreciate <laughs> how he yeah, dives into glad his Glad you let off players. with the bias. We are yeah, biased. Not right. biased announcers, right. just biased, right. you know, former players playing right. underneath him. That's right. If we take a look at the record, though, I mean, Pollard certainly leads a pretty great ball club himself, too. I mean, both coaches. And these are old buddies. These guys have known each other for years and years. Troyer hits that one well. Obi on the run, won't get there. Gets over his head, up against the wall. And Troyer will cruise in with a two-out double. So Troyer, another guy that's been swinging it better of late. He now has the six-game hitting streak. It's huge for the Flames. And I don't think people realize how hard Troyer just hit this ball. Obi can scoot out there. And to hit that 10 feet off the ground that hits the warning track, I mean, that was a laser beam. No wind. <laughs> yeah, that was a, a linea out there. Linea. To throw some baseball lingo for everybody at home. Don't go too deep on us. We won't. The runner out there in scoring position now, two away. John Simmons at the plate. He was a strikeout victim back in the second inning. getting the start today. Brian McClellan could still see him before this one's said and done. Simmons swings through the breaking ball, 2-0, now 2-1. Flames need a big two-out hit right here. Simmons is in a good hitter's count. We'll see what he does with this pitch. Another off-speed pitch. That one just misses 3-1 the count, and you have Braden Horton waiting on deck, who has been maybe Liberty's hottest hitter of late. 3-1 pitch on the way. We're sticking with the off-speed stuff. That's three straight breaking balls. He's gotten the count back to three and two. And I felt like that was a good take right there. Now he's going to have to battle. Again, coming with the off-speed. Simmons fouls it away. Field. Miller calling for it in foul territory and makes the grab. And that'll do it for the Flames in the fourth. Two out. I'm heading into the top of the fifth here with head coach Scott Jackson. Coach, you guys went ahead and pitched to Ben Miller there in the top of the fourth. What? How much debate went into that decision? Well, uh, it, you know, it's 450, 500, whatever he's hitting. Um, you know, we got to two strikes and we were trying to execute a fastball up. We didn't get it there. We actually threw it down, so that's not good. But he got us in frustration, and, you know, we were, we were trying to throw one out of the zone, see if he'd chase it. Um, we missed, so he made us pay. Couple bats awake out there. How do you string them together to get some offense going? Yeah, we got to get going. I mean, it's a good bullpen. You know, you got to keep them here at four and keep it within striking distance because their numbers are really good and they can match you up and make it really tough for you. It's going to be a gritty finish and we got to be able to get a little bit tougher in some moments, especially later in the count. Thanks for your time, Coach. Best of luck, guys. Back up to you. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Yeah, good in information there. We talked about it at the time. How you pitched to Ben Miller in that situation, and Scott Jackson laid it out for us. They really weren't wanting to pitch to him necessarily. They're hoping to get him to chase something. You end up leaving one in the zone, and he makes you pay. Yeah, that makes total sense in what they were trying to do there, and uh, just a tough break. All right, taking a look at Dylan Matheson coming into the ball game for Liberty, their fourth pitcher of the afternoon. Matheson's been a great story for Liberty. This will be his ninth appearance, the ERA of 3.68. Transfer from D2 California University of Pennsylvania. And a guy who they weren't quite sure where he would fit in in this bullpen coming into the season, but has proven himself to be a pretty reliable arm and has gotten a number of opportunities. Fastball slider change. In fact, one of the better sliders on the team. Fastball will get up between 90 and 93. There was the slider right into the leg of Alex Stone. Like you said, Shane, with Liberty still looking for their guy of who, 
their go-to guy out of the pen. That's a perfect situation for Matheson, who shout out to him also climbing up the ladder, D2 coming to D1, a grinder, somebody who works hard and loves seeing how he has capitalized on those opportunities. And does the little things right. He's, he's one strikeout away from being three to one on strikeout to walk ratio and, and hitters are hitting 180 off him. So it's just, it's attacking and, and just having that composure and that mentality to just go after hitters. So he'll face Chase Cruson now. Bruce and single back in the second inning, came around to score, also lined out in the third. Shows bunt with the shift on. So we're seeing these, these Duke players are more than willing to beat the Liberty shift with a bunt if they can just get it down. That's been the hardest part of the deal, is just getting it down. The whole side of the field's wide open to them if they can just drop it down. Yeah, they haven't capitalized on that opportunity, but like I had said earlier, I just love them even attempting it, which just shows to the overall mindset of what Coach Pollard has with this team of being selfless, of, hey, you obviously want to hit a double, but if it's there, take it. Now three and one, the count to Cruson is Phil Matheson having a hard time finding the strike zone. There's ball four. So not the best start here to the fifth inning. Hit batter and now a walk. And this Duke offense, they don't need much help typically anyway. They've just been handed a couple of free passes. So two on, nobody out now for Dylan Obi or Devin Obi, I should say. He's reached twice. Walk in a single. He's come around to score both times. One misses out. Cat and I going to go have a word with his pitcher. And again, it's just slowing it down, and it's just hey, you know, we're still in control. It's just throw strikes. It don't have to be too precise. Just get it in the zone. You got eight guys behind you that are willing to make play and that, that want to make a play behind you. Yes, yeah, Shane. Speak to how hard is it? You know, coming into a game like this, a situation like this. Now you got first and second. It's like a, it can be an island out there. What did you used to do to kind of like? Yeah, and you feel like it's almost falling away from you. And in one wrong pitch, it feel like it could all just tumble down. You have to look at it and analyze it, you know, pitch by pitch. And, and your job is, hey, it's not to come out and have a great outing. It's to get out of the inning that you're in currently. And you can't let that moment get too big, kind of like you were talking about in the hitting situations or, or passing the torch to the next guy or get the bunt down. It's, it's going where you're at and, and knowing where you're at and not trying to do too much. Good hitters count here, 2-0 to Obi. Takes a look at the strike. Obi from an athletic family. His dad, Terry, played football at Oregon in the late 80s. Went on to play in the NFL, wide receiver. And then a long time collegiate football coach. And as we said earlier, he has really taken a step offensively. Last season, started just 14 games, hit 232. This year, 359 batting average, along with some pop, six home runs. 2-2 Two -two pitch on the way, thousand straight back. And that's a huge thing for this Duke offense, because Obi, we know he's fast. Yeah. We know he plays good defense. But I'm sure Coach Pollard is just ecstatic to see what he's done at the plate this year, especially in the middle of this lineup. Huge. What tried to catch the corner with that slider. Just missed, and the count goes full. That's one as a pitcher you're just begging for, especially in a situation like this. Couple runners out there. Payoff pitch now on the way. Goes back to the fastball, and Obi fouls it off. Obi with hits now in nine of his last ten ball games. Waits the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. Back to the slider for Matheson. And that's a big out here in the fifth. About best case scenario, too. Not only do you grab that momentum again, you throw an awesome slider and you get that swing and miss. And, and as a pitcher, that's kind of the, the, the win, the little win that you need to take in that at bat. But now looking forward, you're a pitch away. You know, you're ground ball away from getting a double play and, and switching that momentum back to the Flames dugout. Wallace Clark stands in now, transfer from Oklahoma. Didn't want to, but fouls it off. 
Clark back in 2022 made the Big 12 all freshman team for OU. Played there last year as well before transferring to Duke. Clark 0 for 2 today. He's flown out a couple of times. As that one just misses, 2 and 1 the count. And that's wild to me. That's changed the whole game. Uh, guys being able to transfer, you know, and teams being able to look and get these guys yeah. and bring them to your school who is like a Clark, who can play and who has played at a high level. And however, Coach Pollard was able to get him over here. I mean, that, that changes the dynamic of college baseball. Well, it's finding the you don't want to abandon developing, getting freshmen out of high school and all that. But when you get to a Duke, or we saw last week, a Wake Forest, you can kind of almost look at your roster and say, OK, what are our needs? OK, we need a shortstop. We need a lefty out of the pin or whatever it is. And then go, OK, now let's just go find those guys that have done it at this level that are available in the transfer portal. Winslow 0 for 1, also drew a walk. First pitch to him, fouls it away. Rubs, fastball, slider, changeup. That fastball usually sitting right around 90 miles an hour. Breaking ball in there, heading the count 0 and 2. And change, just like you said, just one pitch at a time. And those were two great pitches there by Grubbs. That one knocked down, and that saved a run. McCadden died just trying to square that thing up in the middle of his chest. Got enough of it to keep that runner from coming down from third. Just selling out for the team, too. It's, it's a selfless play. That thing. <laughs> yeah, that is tough. That hit way out in front. And now there's the punch out the Flames needed. The fastball right by Winslow for a big second out. And that's a, a veteran approach there by, by Taylor Grubbs to, to almost co like compliment and to build off that pitch in the dirt. You're changing eye levels at the end of the day, and, and then you could come back and attack with a fastball in. Either way, there's no rhyme or rhythm. There's no right or wrong reason to do it, but attacking a hitter is the best way to get an out. So now the leadoff man, Zach Morris, up there. Fastball missing to him. Morris 0 for 2. He was also hit by a pitch today. And Morris, after last season playing at BMI, went into the portal, originally committed to South Carolina. Things didn't really work out there and ended up coming to Duke, and boy, are they glad he did. Line drive, base hit gets down, one run scores, a second run going to come in as well. And Zach Morris with a big two-out knock to drive in a pair. What a great at bat one of Duke's best hitters. They're going 0 for 2 today. But just look at that. Nice and controlled. Ball's outside. Just hits it where it's pitched. Well, Morris led Duke with 15 two-out RBIs coming into the game, so I'll make it 17 now. up big Ben Miller but as you look back at the six runs Duke has scored one two three four of those were either a walk or a hit batter that's how they reached so you give a good team free base runners more often than not they're gonna make you pay that's exactly correct there yeah you can't do it and freebies always turn around to bite you and that's what coach Jackson would harp on is the fact of if we're going to lose, make the other team right. beat us. And walks hit by pitches, they always turn into runs. Runner goes, throw to second, is in time. McCadden died, guns down his second, would-be base dealer in this ball. Head coach Chris Pollard, 
So your guy, the guy hitting 455 has three RBIs tonight. How shocked are you that Ben Miller is delivering for you once again? It's incredible. He's put together just an amazing first half of the season. He's had two great bats for us tonight. I probably shouldn't have run Zemo right there, taking the bat out of his hands the way he's swinging such a hot bat. Coach, I know this is a staff day for you guys. What are you liking in, from what you see from your pen tonight? Well, you know, I thought that uh, Kyle came out. He was only going to go one, was really efficient. The fastball was live. Tim came out after we scored in the top of the second, gave us a shutdown inning, but really liked the way Gabe Nard got us off the field there in the third, limited the damage to one run. Thanks for your time. Best of luck in the rest of this one. Guys, back up to you. Yeah, thanks, Sam. And Duke will go back to that bullpen. As Gabriel Nard's day is done, they'll turn to David Boive. He was a guy that we expected to see tonight, junior right-hander out of Charlotte, making his eighth appearance. Has yet to allow an earned run in 12 and two-thirds innings. And he's a guy that has really exploded onto the scene this year as Braden Horton fouls that one away. Boive didn't see any action in 22. Played a little bit last year, but he, he battled injury a lot. Healthy now. And he's going to run the fastball up there in the mid-90s. And Chris Pollard even telling us you know, his stuff is top three or four round kind of stuff. So they are really excited about what he can give them if he can just stay out there and stay healthy for a while. Good fastball, also a good swing and miss slider he'll throw out there. You love seeing a guy like Boyve who has that stuff, have some adversity the first two years, and be able to really kind of put it all together in his junior year and be just such a staple for this uh, Duke bullpen. Now a 95 on the inner half. Two and two now the count is Duke now with two strikes will shift that infield. Playing Horton to pull. Horton fouls it away. Braden doubled his first time up. That was back in the third inning. Came around to score the lone Liberty run. Yeah, and the Flames need Braden to do what a nine hole hitter does, which is the second leadoff man right here. Chases one up in the zone. So Boive with the punch out to begin things here in the fifth. And we see that demeanor and that, that attitude by Boive. That strikeout brings him to eight strikeouts to one walk. He has two walks on the year, and that will be his 16th strikeout. Just a dominant kind of demeanor to him when he takes the mound. You just know what you're going to get and, you know, providing to be very fruitful for the Blue Devils. That one sharply hit off the bat of Kepley. He'll be retired for three. Yeah, I feel like we've said that a few times, and you see it throughout their pitching staff. The strikeout to walk ratio is insane with Duke. Like they do such a good job of limiting the walks, and and I mean we've seen it even here, even here tonight. Yep. And honestly, when you look at the, some of these sample sizes, especially in the beginning of the season, there's such small sample sizes, one, two, three, three appearances. But when you really look at the ratio, you, you almost can't look at the ERA in the beginning of the season, right. but you got to look at the balls and the strikeouts or the walks to strikeout ratio, because that tells you if the guy's attacking, if he's in the zone, you know, vice versa. And it translates directly to wins. Yep. And you see that as well. It's crazy how all the numbers play a part there. Come back for a nice defensive play by Boive, and he makes quick work. A number of them have been around for a while, and they've been able to make that adjustment the second time through. Speaking of veteran hitters, that has made a few adjustments. Ben Miller, two for three today. He was at the plate last inning when Zach Morris was thrown out stealing, and Miller did in fact go around there, strike one. Two for three, three RBIs as well for the Duke third baseman. Can't catch up with that fastball down the count on two. Great spot. And Matheson, no, oh, excuse me, Grubbs punches him out. Able to locate that fastball in the outer half and they retire Miller. Anytime you're able to get him, 
got to feel that's got to feel pretty good. Yeah, that was a great steal there by McCaud and behind the dish, helping his pitcher out. And there you go. You get Gracia beating the shift. There it is. But when we look at it, right, that's one for, I, I don't have the stat in front of me, but that's the first time that you're yeah. beating the shift successfully out of, you know, X amount of times. Yeah, and he's been acting like he's going to do it all game, and there he does it. Single in the books. So it doesn't matter how you get it. Gracia, with his second base knock of the ball game, he's now reached base three times today. So now one on for Logan Bravo. Bravo had a hit in every game of that UVA series this past weekend. Came into the day with five players. As that one smashed by. Five players in their everyday lineup with an OPS over 1,000. Bravo being one of them. Duke started the season on an absolute tear. They won their first nine ball games. Included in that was the 4-2 win over Liberty. There's a strike. Bravo will have to return. And the count goes full. I love seeing how Grubbs is challenging these hitters. He has an intentionality on the mound. You know, it's six to one. You could act like, hey, what does this even mean? And just to see him continue, you know, go right at these guys and his intentionality, you see he's laser focused in. Um, that's what Liberty needs right now to just push them to the next inning to try to get some runs across. And you mentioned too, you know, on both sides of the plate, McCadden and I really working for these strikes and, and kind of working for grubs and getting some of those calls that may be questionable and, and framing them for strikes. Doing a great job behind the plate. Runner goes, strike, throw to second. In time. Strike him out, throw him out. Third time today, McCadden Dye has gunned out a base dealer. A kid that just hasn't quite clicked for him in a, this season in terms of the stats. But the stuff is still every bit as electric. And this is a great game, being up 6-1 for Rochelle to, you know, get some good at-bats under his belt, some good innings as Duke continues down this stretch and as they move towards the end of the season, O'Shell being somebody they're going to need out of the, the bullpen. So hopefully he can get his confidence out here today. Yeah, really it was just more or less one bad outing against Clemson. And it kind of sidetracked the numbers, but his numbers a year ago, 22 appearances, a .69 ERA. He had 66 strikeouts and 39 in the third innings. Like that is about as dominant as you can be, all out of the bullpen. That fastball just misses to Aiden Sweat, three and one the count. He certainly looks the part. Missing again, out one down and in, so the Flames have their leadoff man on. And then for Liberty, any way you can, but we need base runners, and, and that's a great leadoff bat. Leadoff at bat. Yeah, you're so right. Aiden Sweat not trying to do too much. Got a big arm coming at him. Stayed calm, didn't chase out of the zone. Some of those were some close pitches there. And uh, getting it started for the Flames here in the bottom of the six. So 
Dye, who has been just an absolute stud behind the plate for the Flames, now stands in. Takes a breaking ball in there for strike one. Dye. Thrown out three base runners trying to steal in this ball game. Hasn't had much luck at the plate so far here this afternoon. 0 for 2. A good swing on that one. Got under it just a bit. Gracia back a couple of steps. Makes the grab for the first out. Tell you what, some of the previous games we've played here at Al Worthington Stadium, that, that yeah. ball might have went out with the wind factor, but yeah. today... You're yeah. absolutely right. We have seen a number of games where the wind has just grabbed anything you got up in that jet stream there blowing out towards that right field corner. I honestly don't know if I've ever been to a game where those flags aren't moving yeah. at all. <laughs> this is... I'm shocked. The exception more than anything else. Todd Hudson stands in now. He has hit a few up into that jet stream. I'm not sure that he needed the help. But he got it anyway. It's Hudson, his four home runs. All of them prodigious shots. Yeah, you don't want Hudson to extend those hands if you are on the opposite side, because he's got some power. Another just sweet lefty swing. Coach Jackson loves the lefties. And uh, it's a thing of beauty when Hudson connects. And Down to the count, both, both sides of the plate, too, yeah. pitching and hitting. Yeah, he started this game on the mound. Leaves that one up, 95 miles an hour. Squares that one up. Line shot gets through. Sweat makes the turn at second base. He'll go first to third as Todd Hudson with the ringing single. Now the Flames have runners on the corners. That's what I'm talking about right there. Watch him get his hands through. It's a powerful. He's got those long arms. You'll see it right here. 6-6. It's six, six. a lot to get moving, but yeah, you're right. If he gets those... Those arms extended. Yeah, that's put a hurt on. That's right. That torque and with those long arms remind me of a guy that I used to play with and Shane used to play with, Sammy Tarmino. You know, skinnier arms, but man, they could just hit the ball to the moon. Number seven. Sammy couldn't, you know, squat five pounds, but hit the ball to the moon. I like how you really balance the like how you're gonna compliment him, but then you tear him down, and maybe a little more of a compliment, but then those skinny arms, you kind of tear him down again. And I just felt like if he was balanced. listening, I was being way too nice. Yeah, that's, and I just that's, had to you know, brotherly that. love, yeah. you know, undercut him a little bit. <laughs> but can you imagine if he squatted though, you know? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> hit the weight, Sammy. So two on now for the Flames, one away, Cam Foster at the plate. Everybody with an opportunity to start chipping away at this Duke lead. Foster 0 for 2 today. Swings through that fastball. He's another guy with big time power. Really slow start to the season for Cam Foster, but has been swinging the bat much better here of late. And the Flames need it right now. Yeah. One, two pitch on the way. They want it up. They got it. Belt high called strike three. They were wanting something up in the zone, see if they could get him to chase it. I don't think they got it up as much as they would have liked, but they end up getting the borderline call. Yeah, that's tough right there. I mean, two strikes, you got a battle. But I hear Cam there. He's looking that that seemed like it was up. But again, props to these catchers. Props to Winslow for staying down and, and really snagging a strike there. So two away now. Liberty going to have to find a way, the hard way, to get it done. today. Walked back in the second inning, doubled in the fourth. Makes a 
Big slow off speed pitch in there for a strike. Through the Flames is exactly, in my opinion, who you want up. He's starting to get hot, seeing the ball well today. Let's see what he does here. Stayed off speed. That one misses. Three and one to count. John Simmons, the scheduled hitter on deck. Just misses off the outer edge, and they're loaded for Liberty. In that second lead-up spot, you know, Braden Horton coming up, ducks on the pond, as they used to say. Probably the one of the better spots as a, you know, as a hitter at the nine-hole spot to just kind of turn it over to Kepley, and that's going to be what the Flames are looking forward to do here. Well, John Simmons here, 0 for 2 on the day. Big opportunity. You want to get back into a ball game. This is the kind of opportunity you got to cash in. This is it. Coach Jackson used to always talk about, you know, two outs. You know, the game does come down to somebody stepping up in a big moment and getting a two out hit. And that's what Simmons has an opportunity to, to do right now. That one just misses. One on one to count. Simmons getting the start at first base today. Not a ton of playing time this season. Hitting just 263. A big moment. Well struck to center. OB bad route, and it burns him. He started in, then had to head back. And Duke catches a break as that one hops up and over the wall. Big players are made by big opportunities. That was a great piece of hitting by Simmons. He surprised Obi out there. I mean, he hit it so hard, Obi didn't even realize he took a bad read. Yeah, Obi started in and then quickly realized, yeah, he got a lot more of that ball than I thought. Yeah, definitely. And honestly, it kind of shocked me up here. It didn't sound like he hit it as right. hard as he did. And that thing took off. That is huge for Simmons, huge for the Flames. You feel the momentum shift. They're, they're right now back in striking distance. Now, the bad break. And you see right away that Prosh, funky, funky arm angle, gives you a different look as you take a look at the game recap presented by Carter Bank and Trust. Lefty on lefty here. Horton swings through that one. Prosh, a guy that Chris Pollard said is is kind of the guy that they have. You talk about who's the guy that's going to be the shut it down right here. He's kind of that guy for Duke. They trust him in any situation. When they need an out, they can call on him. They call on him now, and we'll see if he can get the job done against Braden Horton. You made a good point, too, that, that funky arm angle. You know, as a hitter, that ball is almost hidden for a long time behind the body, and it, it kind of jumps on you. So that 88, 87 maybe feels like 90. You know, it feels faster than it actually is. One two pitch. Horton lays off of it, even the count at two and two. Especially lefty on lefty, and he really does hold the ball behind his body. Funky is definitely the word to describe Porsche out there. Two two pitch on the way. Territory and it'll reach the seats. One thing Prost did a great job there is clock management. You know, when you look at that pitch clock and it's it's dwindling down in five, four, three, it's about the only way that these pitchers can kind of play with with uh, mentality and kind of get the hitter off time in a little bit. Right, you never got to do that. Never had it. Like you didn't never have the clock to have to worry about. Roller, sliding, grab the underhand toss in time. Bravo. Momentum is what's needed. Yeah, and I said this before about the Blue Devils bullpen, but Liberty's doing the same thing. They're trying to get these guys confident in this game to see who are their main guys that they can rely on as they get further into the season. Roberts hasn't thrown since March 23rd. That was part of the Middle Tennessee series. And he just plunked stone.
That's why you wear the hardware right there, right off the Evo shield. Man, it used to be awful getting hit right there. We heard that one up here in the booth off the Evo shield. Yeah. It's not just for looks. Sometimes. 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 <laughs> well, if you got like four of them on, maybe. Did you have unnecessary accessories back in the day? Were you were you that guy? Yeah, the goal was I had used to wear 10, so it took me like a minute to take them all off when I walked just so everybody knew I was there. No, I'm just kidding. Was I was more of a dirtbag kind of guy. I should have worn Evos, but I just taped my wrist and let's go. The oven mitt, the base running one, is the most popular I think I see nowadays. Is yeah, we didn't have that as, as much. It kind of came around right as we graduated. Yep. Yep. But you hear it, you know. I mean, I'm, I'm for it because if you slide in and with, you know, you have speed and you break a finger, you're done. Bouncer, this could be two. The second for one, the throw to first in time. Four, six, three double play. Sweat to Marsh to Simmons. And they're two away here in the seventh. Roll me up one time, baby. That's textbook right there. You see that great flip, beautiful exchange, and the cannon across to get the runner at first. A little fist bump there by Ben Roberts. There's that momentum Liberty's been looking for. To maybe we can hang on to that and see what happens. So Devin Obi up now at two away, and this inning quickly looks a lot different. And bounced up there, one one to count. That double plays big time because Liberty just came off scoring two runs. You come out, all you want from Roberts is to go after these guys and do that, keep that momentum, get your team back in the dugout, and now he's one out away from getting the bats back up there. Misses. And also when you're around the zone too, you're you're keeping your fielders engaged and you know they're ready to make plays and you know rolling ground balls, they're they're behind you. That one almost got a piece of OB as it ran inside. The last time out for Roberts. He did fight his control a little bit. That was a four-walk day against the Blue Raiders. Trying to avoid handing out a free pass here to Obi. That one well struck to center field. Kepley going back, looking up, and he'll play it off the wall. That one hit right at the base of the fence. And Obi in at second base with a two-out double. 3-1 count. Obi was looking for one pitch, and he got it. And my goodness, he did not miss it. Now, the difference between that one and the one we saw from Simmons, that one sounded like it was about to bang off the wall. Obi, when he got burned on that one earlier, it didn't sound that way, but still carried you know, far enough for a ground rule double. No, and Simmons still struck that well. Sometimes yeah. the bats, these, these different bats are misleading with the sounds of it coming off of the bat. So runner in scoring position now, two outs for Wallace Clark. Clark 0 for 2 today. Down in the count here, 0 and 2. That fastball at 93 on the block. And there's Roberts again, not letting that last at bat affect him. And coming right back, 0 2. Stayed out there with the fastball. Clark just got a piece of it, fouled it away. strike three as well. Maybe in a little half on the inner half a bit, but great location, and that's the part for Ben Roberts. He can play off that pitch and have an effective strike three here. Here comes the one-two offering. And it's two and two. That 
Allen chop foul. And for Ben Roberts, that's a great setup pitch. You know, burning that fastball on the inner half. Good setup for multiple pitches. You could raise a fastball. You could throw a back foot slider here. Uh, if I had to bet on it, if I was picking a pitch, I'd go back foot slider off of that inner half fastball. It sets up perfect for a swing and miss. 2-2 Two -two pitch on the way. He went away. And missed outside. Count now goes full. Yeah, and on the flip side, this is a great at-bat by Wallace. Yep. I mean, he took two pitches that were close. One might have been a strike, but here he is fouling off. Here he is now 3-2. An opportunity to push it forward. And just missed again. So Wallace able to coax a walk here. And now Duke with a couple runners on. To bring up the nine-hole hitter, Macon Winslow. By the way, that's the second walk of the day for Wallace Clark and something that he's been able to do it at times this year, just finding a way on base. So now the nine hole hitter Winslow, 0 for 2 today. Getting ahead of the hitter hasn't been the issue for Roberts, it's finishing. Yeah, and this is the guy that Roberts wants. You know, he's got to turn the page. Obviously, frustrating missed call, but he needs to go after Winslow right now because he does not want to go up to the top end of the order with men on base here. That one fouled straight back right over the top of us. 94 miles an hour from Roberts, so the velocity certainly there for him today. Like you said, Josh, this is the guy, the nine-hole hitter. You really got to go after him. You're ahead in the count. You just got to put that that foot down for the last pitch. Yeah, and we're only saying that that's no diss to making Winslow. I mean, <laughs> this guy is having unbelievable stats. It just so happens the alternative is going to the top end of the order to some of their best hitters. And right. so Winslow is a tough out, a great hitter, but you just can't give the bases loaded here. And there's the swing and a miss. It wasn't easy, but Ben Roberts finally got being the team right now in that conference. DBU eighth in the nation as Kane Kepley keeps on swinging a hot bat. Wide turn at first before thinking better of it and settling for a leadoff single. Kane stays hot. Again, just love how, you know, his just his plate discipline. He's just hitterish up there. He's fun to watch. Every time he's up there about a hit, you're thinking that he can get a hit. And right there again, staying hot. And to your point about their schedule coming up and the games where they could get rolling, that's why this game is so big to continue that momentum yeah. forward as they hit their stride. And, uh, you know, this is the middle of the season that could be, you know, show the trajectory of which way they're going to go. And Shane, like you said at the outset, these are also those games. I mean, you're playing a top 10 team right now that at the end of the season, when people are always looking like, what are those resume building wins? What are those wins you can kind of hang your hat on? Well, you know, that game last week against Wake Forest could have been one. This could certainly be one. There are still a number of those out there for Liberty uh, because of the schedule and the type of difficult schedule that Scott Jackson puts together year after year. Tanner Marsh, the freshman up there now, 0 for 2 on the day. How's that one back and out of play? Marsh, an interesting guy in that Leads the team in strikeouts, but on balls in play, he hits 446, which is best on the team. So if he's putting it in play, good things are happening. Unfortunately, there have been a number of strikeouts for him this, and this is first season with Liberty. And that shows kind of, you know, him coming in as a freshman. He puts a good swing on there. Second for one, the throw to first, not in time. Marsh able to beat it out. Duke is able to cut down the lead runner in Kepler. Yeah, I was just saying, as he grows, 
as an athlete, as you see here, Duke getting one, but can't get Mar Speedy. Good for him for running out of the box hard. You know, as he continues to mature and who he is, he'll continue to have that plate awareness to be able to put some of those in play where he's missing, um, which will then ultimately increase his average as he's a great player with a great future here at Liberty. Strike in there to Aiden Sweat. Sweat 0 for 2 today, couple of strikeouts, also walked and scored a run. Marsh over there at first. Runs well, but just three stolen bases on the year. Two-one count to Sweat. Flames need a big hit from Sweat here. This is why you're in the three-hole. Uh, you know, coaches put you in here because you are the guy, and the guy needs to show up right now. Yeah, he took a rip like he was trying to show up. He came out of his shoes. He's trying to show that ball to the moon right there. Count evens now at two and two. We have seen Duke really come after him with the breaking ball with effectiveness here today. They went back to it there, foul it back and out of play. Yeah, but really, if you're Liberty, it's it's how do I pass the baton to the next guy? And it's just it's so important to just not try to do too much and just get base runners. Sweat's so average at an even 300 right now. Up the middle, the second for one to first, not in time, mishandled, wouldn't have been in time either way, so a second straight fielder's choice. And the Flames now with two away in that runner on first. Yeah, you love the hustle. I know I said it about Marsh, but also with Sweat. You love the hustle here by the Flames runners. And kids, if you're watching at home, that's what it's all about. If you if you hit into what seems like a double play, put your head down, run through, because you never know what this inning holds. And with his effort, the one thing he can control, now they still get another opportunity. Cadden die at the play now, 0 for 3. Struck out in the first, has also flown out a couple of times. Good swing on that one the other way. That one's twisting away from the right fielder, Gracia, and it gets down and into the corner. Around third, coming home is Sweat. And the freshman, McCadden Dye, delivers with an RBI double. Just like I said, Sweat running it out, and now Dye comes up with a huge double. Opposite way, puts a great swing on it. Basically places it in that corner. That was a great, great at bat, great hit right there. Being 0 for 3, coming up in your moment and making the most of it. And now again, another opportunity for the Flames to push another run across the plate. Well, now you have the tying run at the plate in Todd Hudson. Now, having said that, this is a tough dude for a lefty to face, and you saw him look a little uncomfortable on that first offer. And if you are Duke, this is your the guy that you quote unquote go after. It's your lefty lefty matchup. You got a veteran on the mound and, and you have two outs. Owen Proch brings in the one one pitch. That is right there with the fastball. That's a now one and two. Todd does have a hit on the day right back in the sixth inning. One two pitch. And he lays off the breaking ball. Two or two now to count. That's great plate discipline by Todd Hudson. And that's a that's a big league wipeout slider off speed right there by Proch. And people might say, like, what do you mean that was so far out? But Proch, since he hides the ball so well, it looks like it's coming over the plate and then it just dies. That one skied. The infield, the shortstop, Clark calling for it. Nope. And taking over is Cruz in the left fielder. So that'll do it. There is not. They got to bring their A game every single week and weekend. 
So Ben Roberts remains in the ball game for the Flames. He'll face the top of this Duke order. Zach Morris to lead it off. Morris has reached twice. And a two RBI single in the fifth. He's also hit by a pitch back in the second. Takes a strike there at 92 miles an hour. That one shot the other way and through. A nice piece of hitting there by Zach Morris, and he's on for the third time. Yeah, you love Roberts. It's just he's still competing. It's just a good piece of hitting by Morris right there. I feel like that was a good pitch. Just kind of get your hat off. He might have missed a little bit, you know, over over the plate, but just a good hit. But now, again, another opportunity. Double play ball as Liberty puts a shift on here again. So Ben Miller at the plate. Couple of knocks today. He's also driven in three. And you're at the stage of the ball game where you're Liberty, you're trailing by two. Duke gets... Gets a run or two here in this inning. Boy, that might be a hole too deep to climb out of. Got to, got, got to hold them to right where they are, you feel like, here to have a chance in the late innings. Yeah, Liberty can't let that happen. They got to hold the line, put a line in the sand right here, and, you know, get our impact player of the game, Duke's best hitter. Try to get him out right here. In on his hands, fouled that one off. One and two now to count to Miller. The hard part is, you know, pitching to Miller, there's not an out pitch, right? It's not like you can throw that slider in the dirt and then maybe he'll chase it. It's such a disciplined piece of hitting by Miller. All, we've seen it all day. Yeah, and you see that throughout the lineup, which is why I personally feel like their averages are so high. Because as a pitcher, and Shane, you can speak to this, is like if you keep having tough at bat after tough at bat after tough at bat, that comes up, that wears on you as the pitcher. And, you know, you see that reflect in their numbers of them helping each other wear the pitchers down. And you've also seen this today. Guys like Miller just spoil good pitch after good pitch after good pitch until he can finally get something he can handle. Listen, that's what you see when you watch pro baseball. These guys, they don't swing at balls out of the zone. If something's close that they don't like, here, yep. I'll just give that a little little flip of the wrist, and now we're back. And now he's worked the count full. And then you end up in these spots right here when you do that. When you battle, you wear down the pitcher, you end up in a 3-2. Now it's anybody's ball game. And for Ben, you have to throw a strike. Right? Exactly. You, you are forced to throw a strike over the plate. Runner goes. The shift is on. That will beat the shift. A little flare that gets down into right field. And going first to third with Zach Morris. So a good pitch made by Roberts, but nothing you can do about that. And then you have that. That is baseball right there. We used to say less barrels, more hits. And when it rains, it pours. And for our friend Miller, it is a torrential downpour <laughs> hurricane going on. He can't miss anything. And uh, right there again, but that, that, that shows his hand-eye coordination and how good of a hitter he is, right? He's right. given a chance for it to fall. And it, 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 yep. Exactly right. Exactly right. A 10-game hitting streak, and eight now of those 10 games have been multi-hit games for Ben Miller. So now runners on the corners, nobody out for the freshman, A.J. Gracia. He's been a handful today as well. A couple of singles, also drawn a walk. And what does Roberts have to do? We talked about it. He's got he's to forget about it. Yep. You know, they, Liberty still needs him to step up and to get outs right here. There's a million different ways to do it, right? It's a strikeout double play. It's it's a double play fielder's choice. I mean, there's so many different ways to do it, but it starts with just attacking the zone. Two one pitch coming to Gracia as we check in with Emily. You know what Coach Pollard told us about Gracia? What's really impressive about him is the heart rate. It's more like a senior. 
He plays with a very low heart rate, very little phases him. He doesn't get worked up. No moment is too big. And for a freshman, that's good quality to have. Yeah, no doubt. Stands in now. 2-2 pitch in the dirt. Runner goes. Throw to second. High. The tag. Not in time. So Miller able to advance 90 feet. That erases any possibility of a double play. Yeah, more than likely infield, infield in for Liberty. You know, holding that run. Not allowing the Blue Devils to score here in deep, deep in the game. Yeah, Miller the first one to escape. As you said, Matt McCannon, who's yes, still right. out of blocking it. That almost ball was able to is throw touched. Home. Deep and gone. Three-run home run for A.J. Gracia. And that may be the nail in the coffin. And just perfect timing on Emily's report, just having ice cold in the veins and just not having that heartbeat to, to get on the moment. And like I said, just, just finding your pitch and doing, handling it well. And that's what happens when you are confident, you've experienced it, you do things like this and launch the ball into the stratosphere. My goodness. What well, a great, you great go, hit. You go from one at bat ago where Gracia is pushing a little bunt down the third baseline to beat the shift to him leaving the building with a three-run home run. That's his eighth of the season. Again, he's on pace to break the Duke freshman home run record, which is 11. Wow. So the top part of this lineup continues to do damage. In fact, the top three hitters now have driven in eight of the nine runs for the Blue Devils. Yeah, and that's why they're there. Clearly, I mean, this, this lineup is stacked, but those top three guys, you got, you know, you got your seniors, your leaders leading off there, and then Grassi has a freshman who, just like Emily said, plays like a senior. Yep. It's a tough trio there to get through. So Logan Bravo stands in now, 9-4 ball game. Duke has broken this one open in the eighth. And that's the way it can go for a pitcher sometimes, isn't it? You give up a couple of, a couple of not exactly loud base hits. You're like, ah, oh, man, I made a pretty good pitch there. Didn't really square it up, but found a hole, and then somebody does square one up, and that quickly can turn. Yep, it's a little bit of a gut punch, too, but at the end of the day, you have a job to do, and then that's just get outs and, and throw strikes and, and just compete around the zone. That was a swing and a miss. They will throw to first base to complete the strikeout. Bravo retired. And that's huge. Carter will run that fastball up into the mid 90s. Also has a slider. There's the slider. Alex Stone. Carter's last time out came a week ago against Wake Forest. He was out there kind of in that pivotal inning late. Flames gave up a couple of runs, two unearned runs. Carter was out there. He also issued a couple of walks. And is in danger of handing out another one here, three and zero. Oh. Which that's also probably why Coach Jackson has him out here right now to keep him in the rhythm. He's their guy coming out of the pen late in the games and uh, trying to get his confidence back. Was struggling just a little bit last week. Um, to keep him in that rhythm as being the guy coming out the pen and late in the innings. And there's ball four. And Carter has fought that control this season. He's now issued at least one walk in eight of his ten appearances.
But from a pitching standpoint, you ought to have the one thing you can hang your hat on now is that you are one pitch away. Double play is in order. And you almost have to convince yourself that that's. You pitchers are all so positive. That one shot through the right side. Devin Obi with a ringing single. He's having a, a great afternoon. Now, three hit day. He's also drawn a walk. I'll take that back. That was Cruson with the single. His second knock of the day. Obi at the plate now. Yeah, you guys are positive, but you got to be. You have to. When you're out there, because you're on an island. You're by yourself. If you don't have positive self-talk, you don't believe in yourself, nobody does. Whoa, that one. Up and over the head of Obi. I like to think of it, you know, the, the game starts and it ends with the pitcher, right? The, the ball is thrown. Well, that's a little far. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> you know, I'm just kidding. You're right. You're right. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> you just got it because they end up my position players out there. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. You're right. <laughs> it really does. And if they're not willing to throw strikes and move it forward, that one just popped out of the mid of McCadden die. Allows both runners to advance. You know, to your point, Shane, you can't really outscore, you know, bad pitching, right? I mean, you can, but it's gonna, it's gonna get you every time. It is one or lost on the mound. Chopped to third, the tag, no, the throw now dug out nicely by Simmons. Foster tried to apply that tag quickly. The runner at third base, which is now a Yelton, by the way. And now this crew's gonna get together. They, they want to talk about it. Yeah, great heads up play, honestly, by both of these guys. And for Foster to make the tag and then still get the guy out at first. And the crew has emerged. Nope, keep him there. So I think we're in agreement. That's probably the right call. Didn't see enough there to overturn it. As it is two away as Obi was retired. Brings up Wallace Clark, shortstop. And that hit him. And actually a huge break that that hit him as the runner from third was gonna walk in. Yep. It's a big break for the Flames, honestly. So now they're loaded. For making Winslow nine hole hitter. Fastball at 94 misses upstairs. Winslow 0 for 3. And he's also drawn a walk and scored. Three runs across here in the eighth for Duke. This one bounced to Foster. He'll go the short route. And that'll do it for the Blue Devils here in the inning. But Three more huge runs on the board as the Blue Devils. Fastball at 93. You know, the Flames, he felt like they scratched and clawed to get that run across in the bottom of the seventh. They cut the deficit to just two. Felt like, okay, you got a little, a little momentum. You're back in this ball game. And then, bang, that three run home run by Gracia really changed the mood inside this ballpark. Yeah, changed the mood with one swing. Too. Yeah. <laughs> one swing, and they just got to get that momentum back. They just got to do exactly what they did the last time and try to get somebody on base and start the rally. Swing and a miss. Count evens up at two and two. Foster 0 for 3 here today. Couple of strikeouts. That one hits sharply and through the hole. First knock of the day, and the Flames have their leadoff man aboard in the eighth. There it is, exactly what the Flames needed. Leadoff guy getting on, Cam Foster. Good for him for having some rough at bats and coming around and doing what we all know that he can do, which is 
put a hurting on that ball. That ball went through the infield quick. And now the campaign starts. The base runner campaign if you're Liberty. Well, Troyer, they haven't been able to retire him here today. That one hits him. They still haven't gotten him out. He reaches again. So fourth time today he's been able to reach base. And I suppose if you were going to erase a five-run late inning deficit, it's a pretty good way to start doing it. A couple of base runners, still nobody away. John Simmons up there now who delivered with a big two RBI. Ground rule double back in the sixth inning. And Allen, who on the season has hit much better against left-handers than righties. Takes the first offering upstairs. Clellan hitting just over 250 on the year. Takes that one right in there. Clellan has been the primary first baseman for Liberty this year, has driven in 15. A big rip at that one came up empty. One and two to count. Big swing right there. I love the swing. I mean, coming off the bench, just trying to get into the rhythm of the game. That was needs to do something. Two strikes here. And looked at strike three. So a good start to the outing for Edward Hart as McClellan's retired. Now, Hart's going to have the opportunity to face a couple lefties in a row. Horton here in the nine hole, then Kepley, the leadoff man, as we're going to get another meeting on the mound. Well, I would have assumed he would have gotten the chance to face them, but we shall see. How have we not sold a sponsorship for pitching changes? That's a missed opportunity. Think about how many times we could have pitched a product in this ball game, and this just we could have been cashing yeah. in. Wasted opportunity. Unbelievable. At least start the cashing in. Yeah, at least for the yeah, midweeks, mid right? for sure. That's, yeah. <laughs> now we'll just have to take shout outs, twenty dollars a pot, yeah, right? Until well, the end of the game. I am willing. <laughs> so Beelitz in the face, Braden Horton, two on, one away. Fastball, changeup, slider, and a cutter for the Duke closer. And when you talk about that changeup that he throws, Chris Pollard says probably the best changeup he's ever coached in his life. It's that good. Which is probably why, I mean, obviously a huge part of his success, because I know as a hitter, if you have a guy with a good arm and he can drop that changeup on you, it's dead. It's that other layer of the onion that you always have to be worried about when you're, when you're hitting. 2-2 two, two count. There it was. Just right there. It is so hard because it looks like the same pitch as the fastball coming out of the arm. But yet it's just falling off the table. So much slower and just a great wipeout pitch there. Chris Pollard said, you know, he goes, yeah, he walked on. Great story how hard he's worked and his competitiveness. He goes, I think he's going to be in the big leagues in two years. He goes, I think he goes, he said, I think he's that good. Whoa. His stuff is that good. You get the fastball up into the mid 90s at times, and then that that change up. And that's a huge compliment coming from a coach who's been around the game, seen so many players. That's a big time compliment from Coach Pollard. Let's check in with them. Yeah, Coach added that the click moment physically it started to click when he learned how to manage and harness that changeup in the fall of 22. He started to see a ton of the swing and miss. It's a really elite pitch, like you guys are saying, 50% swing and miss on this changeup. And he started to develop some trust and confidence and competitiveness in his outings in the spring. So they started to put him in higher leverage moments, and he just kept handling them and rising to those moments. His teammates really, really trust him. Well, they put him out here in this situation, and now the situation becomes a little more important. As the base is loaded for Liberty, two away. Tanner marched at the plate. Still a five-run lead for Duke, but boy, a hit here could 
Start to change the complexion, change the mood a little bit in the stadium. And it's a hitter's count for Marsh. The Flames need an electric swing and hit here by Marsh. Big rip, came up empty. Marsh hitless on the day, 0 for 3. Up the middle and snagged by Bielenson. He'll run it almost the entire way there, underhanded to first. And Duke gets at against these three hitters at the top of the lineup. Yeah, Zach Morris to lead it off. A couple hits here tonight. A couple RBIs. Yeah, and that's, and Shane, you could probably speak to this. That has to be kind of the approach here, right? You're not, you're Trey Cooper. You're not coming in going, oh, man, 9-4 ball game. Why am I pitching in a low leverage situation like this? You've got to view it as like, this is my opportunity to get in some good work and to hopefully find something that I can build on and put myself in position to be in a higher leverage situation the next time around. Yep, and I, I've said it earlier in the broadcast, it's, it's being ready when your number's called out of the bullpen, and it's a win-win situation here uh, for Trey Cooper. You you have an inning to come in and, and shut down and limit the bleeding. Um, there's no loss in the sense of, of the opportunity you have if you're Trey, Co uh, Trey Cooper. Down even up two and two to Zach Morris. Single each of his last two at bats. That one sails all the way back to the backstop. Full count. Cooper's last time out came a week ago against Wake Forest. Went an inning in the third, did walk three. And gets the punch out there on the fastball. Cooper's one of those guys, and, and you feel like you see guys like this every season, but say, boy, batting average against him is only 158. So if you're able to just keep it in the strike zone, it's not like guys are hitting him, but it's just being in the strike zone that's been the challenge. Yep, exactly. And he knows that. I mean, you know, obviously, I'm sure Tyler Robinson, they've had plenty of conversations and worked a ton. It's just a matter of putting it into practice. You see that with his last, I mean, three pitches. I know that one just missed, but he's got nasty stuff. It's electric. The ball flies out of his hands. It's off speed. And for Trey, we were talking about the score, but right now he's facing three of some of the best hitters in the country. And so a great opportunity to work through all that stuff. With nothing to lose, right? Nothing I mean, you, you, you're in a ball game. Your only job is to get three outs. That's the only job. Miller stands up there now. Three hits, three RBIs. His average now at 462. Tell you what, 462 on April 2nd. That feels a little bit different than it felt even just a couple of weeks ago, right? It's hugely different. I mean, for his average to be that high, I know we're still, you know, getting towards the midway point, but it's literally insane. It is. I mean, Miller is, he's not missing anything. And you can just see the confidence here. I mean, right now, yeah. still having another good at bat. Top of the ninth. Never wasting an at bat. Oh, good. Fastball 94 on the inner half. That's the way to get your number called again. You just you come in, you keep the foot down, and you don't let anyone up for air, and you do the job when your number's called. It's great pitching by Trey Cooper. Listen, that last pitch was gross. That thing had some movement on it, 94. Coach has to feel good about watching Trey Cooper do that. Well, Cooper was a guy that they thought was going to be the closer, essentially, at the beginning of the year. One of the guys at the back end of that bullpen. Certainly see why when you see the stuff. Jason A.J. Gracia now. He had really the big blow here late in the ball game. Three run home run in the eighth inning. It was just a two run game at that point. That 
Down on the count here, 0 and 2. That one misses upstairs. Pitch just misses off the outer edge. That fastball up at 94. Some good life on the fastball tonight from Cooper. What's he throwing here, Shane? It's fastball in. The, uh, the only pitch to throw is fastball in because you can't let him extend his hands. That's what Garcia's looking to do. Garcia. And with the breaking ball, count goes full. Now you have to throw the, the fastball. There you go. He should have listened the first time. <laughs> the talk louder, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Head out the window. Yeah. Payoff pitch on the way. There you go. Fastball by him at 94. So. Sweat hitless on the night. 0 for 3. Takes a look at strike one. And if you're Bielensen, you know, maybe statistically this isn't a save opportunity, but I can promise you through the ears and in the mind, this is the same intensity and the same feel to, to practice like you're in a save opportunity on a, on a midweek. Sweat fouls it away, one and two to count. Yeah, and according to what we've heard from Coach Pollard, it doesn't seem like Bielensen cares. Like, he's just going to take care of business and you see that his intentionality on the mound. He doesn't care if it's safe or not. He's going to do what he does. That one scatters the fellas down there on that Liberty dugout. Got to watch your lips down yeah, there. Yeah. Here comes the one two. Somehow, some way, Flames trying to get some base runners here and make it interesting in the ninth. And Sweat putting together a good at bat. Bielensen just having th the most confidence to throw like that changeup and, you know, 50 50, or I should say 50% swing and miss. I mean, as a coin flip, to have one of your pitches going to be a swing and miss, yeah. that is electric. Great take. There was the changeup. Man, that was a that was a great eye. There by Sweat. Three-two pitch coming. Up the middle and booted. Would have been a tough play anyway for Morris as he was coming over by the bag, but just mishandled it, and Sweat will reach. So the Flames get their leadoff man on here in the ninth. There it is, start warming up the flame train. Somebody's got to crank the engine going. That one got in on the hands. Look at, look at Bielinson. Not ever recommended, I can tell you, by, by coaches to get that bare hand out there and try to just snag it. I'm sure Coach Pollard was so happy that passed yeah, by his throwing hand. Considering the action of that change. <laughs> So this one sky to right field. A catch made by Gracia and Caden Die retired. It's Todd Hudson to the plate. Hudson one for four at a single back in the sixth inning. up with that 93 mile an hour fastball. Another one right there. One and two now the count. And with two strikes that Duke infield will shift for Todd Hudson. Play him to pull.
Just missed off the outer edge. So it's really cool right there for Bielensen. It's almost a setup pitch right there. It's a fastball to change the eye level to Todd Hudson. If, if I'm a guessing guy, I'm going to think that the changeup's coming right back after. That one bounced. The second, the second for one, the first not in time. So the Flames now down to their final out. Still the fastball does the same thing there, right, Shane? Yep. Like you thought change up. You know, I'm sure Liberty thought change up and he was a little late there and just pounded into the ground. Well, that's the beauty too. When you have all your stuff and you're playing off of each of your pitches, you're commanding the strike, you're commanding the fastball on each side of the plate. It sharpens up that change up, that slider, and it, it's more effective. Well, you just always have to have it in the back of your mind, too, as a hitter, right? You're just always thinking that could be, that's his best pitch. That could be coming at any time. That's right. That's why I hate the changeup. I'm having nightmares tonight. <laughs> it's like it messes with you. It's always yeah. in your brain. Well, Liberty down to their final strike now. 0-2 to Cam Foster. And actually, he really likes the right-on-right -right changeup, which you might see again here. Last ball up. do it. The swing and a miss. Down goes Cam Foster. Down go the Flames. Bielitsen able to close it out.